Who here uh, is interested in computer programming? Okay, great. Good, good bit of programmers. Uh, how about video game design? Okay, awesome. So um, I uh, have been playing around with um, programming and game design since I was about 14 years old. Uh, currently, I am. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, currently, I'm uh, a master's student at uh, University of Florida at the Digital Worlds Institute, um, and. Um, I'm experienced in Unity, uh, web development, um, several different APIs, um, front end and back end on web. And um, I've done some stuff in C. And um, Unity has been my latest endeavor. I've um, been working in that uh, engine for several years. Um, so what I'm going to focus on tonight is uh, around creating uh, cutscenes in Unity, uh, specifically using XML. Um, this first example I'm going to show is something uh, I created several years ago. Kind of has a funny story behind it. Um, who's heard of a company in town called Shadow Health? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I interviewed for them, I was a little overconfident, botched the interview, and so my repercussion was, I'm going to prove myself to them by making my own shadow health thing, crazy as I am. So I spent like month, month and a half, I three modeled character, I got my roommate to do his voice, and I kind of spiced it up, made it a little funny and humorous. So. Um, this is kind of showing um, and is an example of kind of sort of a more rough way to do a cutscene without XMLs, kind of before I kind of discovered this technique, which works way better, but um, it's still very effective and uh, this is a fun little demo I just wanted to show off. So um, can we have a volunteer? Okay, come on up. Okay, so this, this, is, this is little Billy. Okay, so um, say there's a, um, there's a little dialogue window right there, and go ahead and talk to him. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, ask him how old he is. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, so he, he's here to get a vaccination. Um, so click the Give Vaccine button. Oh, uh, you made him cry. We got to do something to cheer him up now. Um, there's the option. Uh, that doesn't work, the top one. OK. Um, Okay, so I think uh, I, I think we broke it. <laughs> we're, we're just gonna restart it. Okay, so 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 give him the vaccine vaccine again. We're gonna go through all that. <laughs> okay, uh, dresses Bobo the clown to cheer him up. It's a little glitchy right now because I, I poured it into a newer version of Unity and it messed up his face in the reflection, but you get the idea. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, you got three options. What do you want to do? Do a funny clown dance, honk your red nose, or squirt them with your flower? Oh dear. Do they all work? Yeah, they all work. <laughs> all right, you're doing a cl funny clown dance. Uh, wait, don't, don't, don't click them all at once. Wait, wait, wait slow it down. Okay. Uh, yeah, honk your red nose. Okay, he's, he's done. 
Oh wait. Ah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, he's out. <laughs> Shadow health, killing little billies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, what was that? Did it get you the job? Uh, I start, went back to school, so I never went back for the interview. <laughs> it would have been fun to do this, so didn't happen. <laughs> uh, anyway, so kind of showing sort of um, the older way I used to do it. So um, the way Unity works is... Uh, uh, this right here is all the code for the clown scene, and it has something called a uh, I enumerator core routine, which kind of runs in parallel to everything else. And I just pretty much just said to run this, and it has all these lines of code, and I'm using a plugin called iTween to do different kind of uh, movements. Um, and I have these yield return wait per second, so it's going to wait for a certain amount of time, and you know, it's kind of cumbersome designing it this way. So the next example I'm going to kind of go into uh, is showing a whole new approach to uh, doing cutscenes in Unity. Um, so we're going to open a different project. This was um, a school project uh, called Interactive Storytelling and this was my final project uh, for this particular class. Um, and uh, part of this was where I started getting into experimenting with using XML to develop cutscenes, which actually um, I found to be a very uh, elegant solution and it uh, can be very efficient in creating um, cutscenes. So uh, the storyline behind this game is your. Uh, uh, you're uh, you're a man, and you have a rich uncle who who owns a like a junk food company, and you inherit it from him. And you're kind of challenged with like, okay, the whole moral thing: do you want to keep making junk food, or do you want to try to make it more healthy? This is something idea I was playing with. Um, so we want a different volunteer to play this game. Come on up. And actually, I may want to give you some guidance because you pick certain options, it'll just reset the whole game. And <laughs> <laughs> but um, this this is uh, this whole game's pretty much an interactive cutscene. So okay. um, use the the keyboards up and down arrows, and uh, oops, I may want to turn that down a little bit. Hold on. I was experimenting with a different thing. I used like just a texture on the face and stuff. It's not quite as well designed as Little Billy. You want to read that out loud to everyone? Okay. To my dearest nephew, if you're receiving this message, I am no longer in the realm of living. Your presence in my life has been such a blessing. I wanted to thank you for all the wonderful times we've had. In return for your kindness, I'm leaving several items of my inheritance. First off, I want to leave you my fishing boat, fishing rod, and tackle box. Those times we spent on the lake are some of the best of my life. Next, I want to give you my rod, or my red Ford Fiesta RSWRC. It's a classic car, and I hope you will take as good care of it as I have. Last, I want to offer you, offer you my family business, the Cheese Fry Factory. It's your mind is business since I trust more than anyone else. Now, this might be more responsibility than you're willing to take on. In that case, I will offer it to my other nephew, Bartholomew, who is vice president of the company. I trust that you will make the right choice. Sincerely, Uncle Rich. All right, press space bar. Okay. You're going to have two choices. Uh, just accept the ownership of the company. Press space bar. There you go.
Okay, they walk a little funny there. All right. So, just give me a little introduction. Space, press space bar to keep uh, advancing the dialogue. going yeah uh, go ahead and just choose nothing at the moment there we go you stole my prop motion got some crazy air in this guy might as well uh, go ahead and fire him that's that's the funnest option in kind of a weird way, but yeah, we'll... Alright, so... There we go. That, that was it. Okay. Alright. So, um... Believe it or not, that entire... Um, it's still kind of rough, but um, to really get that whole scene together, that was just about two days of work which um, there's a lot going on there so that would not have been possible with the old method but um, I'll kind of show you kind of sort of how this works um, was it was running um, with uh, reading an XML file that I, I created a um, C sharp script in unity to interpret it and then uh, it just goes through line by line through the XML script and it just figures out how to move everything around and bring up the dialogue boxes and everything like that. So um, here is the file that I used. Um, so uh, it's divided into several sequences. So I have an intro sequence. Um, there's a first day sequence. So that's whenever the, everything happens. And um, it's actually a fairly uh, minimal amount of code that it actually this entire one file does everything you just saw just a minute ago. So it's actually pretty compact. Um, you can actually see, so like right here is where it actually shows the will being read or that letter from his uncle. And uh, all it did was it just is going down this um, in series of instructions it reaches this and it just puts up the dialogue on the screen and then you have different types of um, uh, right here so you can change the emotions of the characters so you can say his body emotion and then his face emotion uh, you have wait tags which tell it to wait a certain amount of seconds um, also you make certain choices, uh, so here's like the dialogue, and it will actually uh, has its own variable system built into it. So you like there's a variable called on, and gave it a value y or n, and then there's a fork down here, and it will take you to different sequences depending on uh, what the value of the variable is. Um, kind of show you briefly how the interpreter works. Um, so it reads in the file, um, send up a lot of the variables. Uh, when it gets into it, it actually goes and uh, has a switch statement. It looks at the different nodes. So there could be a move node, a rotate node, wait, go to, dialog, full screen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it um, simply goes to different functions based on which node and the function affects how the game interacts and um, it's kind of all there is to it and uh, um, so that's uh, one example so I uh, took this a little bit further in this next project I've kind of iterated on um,
So this was uh, for a different class. Uh, we were tasked to create a video game that's to educate kids about invasive species. And uh, who would like to play this game? Volunteer? Anyone? Anyone want to come a second time? Okay, my brother's coming up. All right, this was a um, group of four of us created this. Um, I did all the programming. We had someone else do that, some of the art assets. Uh, actually, hold on one second. I'm gonna make one little. There. This is the game. Yeah. <laughs> It's coming up. Just give it a second. There we go. Just click. Yeah. Three types of species. Native, non-native, and invasive. So that's actually do a right click. Ignore, drag your finger because it's set up for a phone. So hold, hold right down. Uh, my mouse is actually, the mouse is right to your left. You call that. Yeah. There you go. Scroll in and out. Scroll in and out, yeah. Go ahead and zoom in on the farmer. Yeah. Okay, select the researcher, now drag down and uh, select one of the finds. Click research. Okay, we'll, we'll cut it off there. Is that it? Well, there's more, but kind of showing my point. Um, so once again, I use the um, iterated from the uh, original. Uh, XML uh, cutscene, and uh, I used it to actually run the tutorial in this game. So um, here's this right here. It sets limits for the camera. There's added new types of commands just for this game specifically. Um, so it has different characters like the inspector and it will, um, this affects the actual uh, Um, picture that shows up in the dialogue window. Um, I use these color tags. The color tags was actually um, a little bit of a challenge to actually get it to ignore the color tags when it was writing out the um, text. I had to actually have it analyze it and it had to um, add the t closing color tag in because um, it actually sort of writes it out 
in pieces. So if it's halfway done and it hadn't reached a closing tag, um, it would write in this opening color tag and so it actually had to have it look ahead to see the closing tag and add that in as it's writing it until it reached the actual placement of it. Um, okay, yeah, that's fine. All right. Well, uh, I think we're about out of time, but um, anyway, that's a overview. Uh, yeah, what's up? So one of those XML scripts, uh, how many lines is that combined with the C sharp interpreter? And how many lines of code would you have to program if you were just doing it all in C sharp? Um, estimate wise. Estimate wise. Um, I could say probably two, three, four times as many lines, if not more. In C sharp. In C sharp. Wow. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Thanks. Where'd you get the sick music or games? Um, a lot of just um, SoundCloud or not SoundCloud, but some just internet. Good yeah. choices. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thank you.